The National Petroleum Authority is justifying the decision by government to impose taxes and levies on the transport of marine gas oil in the country. According to the MPA, unscrupulous petroleum service providers try to cheat the system by dumping marine oil meant for export back onto the local market to make some economic gains and for tax avoidance purposes. The situation is said to uh, cost the country 18 million Ghana cities of tax revenue. In an interview with Joy Business, Chief Executive of the NPA, Hassan Tampuri, disclosed that that is why the special petroleum uh, tax has been extended. 2018 budget, the finance minister has imposed um, some taxes, levies, and margins on the price of MGO foreign. So that will take out the, the difference in price. Because essentially it's the same diesel that we consume at homes in our vehicles that is being used for the MGO. So there is an incentive to divert. Okay, for once there is an incentive to, to divert and the prices differ, naturally, you know, people will be amenable to using some other means to divert it onto the market. So now you are paying the same price on MGO foreign as you pay at the pump by way of tax. So nobody really is going to put in place any measures at all anymore. So we in MPA, we have these projections that we do um, on a yearly basis. There's a projection of at least 5% increase from the previous year's volumes. So, and, and that has been consistent, it's been working like magic. So when you have a situation where the recorded official volumes do not meet the 5% potential increase, then there's a problem. So you have the estimates and you have the actuals. And by our estimates, there's been some serious leakages until sometime August thereabouts when the economic management team made some intervention for us to roll out and that kind of abated all these leakages. I'm sure it, would have, it could have been more but for the intervention of the economic management team which um, gave us the immediate you know powers to do what we had to do. Government has indicated it's working to have a new refinery set up next to the Tema oil refinery in the next four years. The initiative would be private sector led while government would have some slight equity in the new project. This is part of its plan to turn around the fortunes of the current facility and the refinery business in the country. Energy Minister Bwachi Jako said the new tour would have an extended capacity of uh, 150,000 while the existing tour would serve as a tank farm to the new facility to be established. This, he said, is part of government's plan to make the country a petroleum hub in the sub-region. At the end of the day, we have to understand what we are doing. The petroleum hub is largely an export-oriented operation. Tor is largely, in fact, a 100% domestic production capacity. Question you have to ask yourself, is that for a $4 billion investment into the new plant of Tor, should government be the sole equity owner? Should government invest $4 billion in, in a, an oil refinery for the domestic market? Before I answer yes or no, let me give you a related example. To provide a thermal plant of 400 megawatt combined cycle cost $650 million. That same $650 million can build 50 first class polyclinics in this country. Now, if you are holding the public purse, and from a public policy standpoint, what choice do you make? I think it's an easy one. I will put the money in the 50 polyclinics where private investments will not go and leave the thermal plants to private invest investment which can eke out a return, a decent return. So in, from a public policy perspective, we always have to be careful as holders of the public pairs which investments we make to enhance the public good. Some of these investments that enhance the public good can and must only be made by, by government. And you leave to the private sector what they can do with their own private capital.
to invest $4 billion of government money into a refinery where private capital will go, I do not think is the best public policy judgment we ought to make. Certainly, government must take an equity participation in that. But those, de those details are to be worked out. But the Public Relations Officer of the Energy Ministry, uh, Nana Damwat, disagrees. Speaking on the marketplace, he said that the, his boss's concerns were misconstrued. When he says a new tour, he meant the facility tour, not the company tour. I don't know if you understand what I mean. So well, currently, the company is known as the Tama Oil Refining, yes, but its core activity is refining fuel. So a new tour in this, in this instance refers to a new facility that will be put up, also to be known as Tama Oil Refining. The plan is to build a 150,000 barrels a day okay. uh, refining plant. At just the current uh, sighting of the Tama Oil Refining, you know, there's a piece of land available ne right next to uh, the current Tama Oil Refining. Okay. Now, when that facility has been built, because it is a refinery, it would will, it would need um, tank farms to store both the refined product and then the crude oil and more other things. So, after that facility has been built and is running, then we may have to decommission the machinery at the current Tema Oil Refinery location. And it and it please enhance its storage capacity or enhance the storage capacity of the current tank farms there. So that the new 150 barrels per day capacity refinery will be running, and then the current site will just be a tank farm. In other news tonight, residents of Suami Makuro in Kumasi were left in panic after a petrol tanker somersaulted and spilled its contents on the streets. Fire Service and National Disaster Management Organization officials mounted surveillance to prevent any fire contact. Residents close to the accident scene have also uh, been advised to evacuate. Nana Sensumenza has more in this next report. Swami Magazine, noted for its large concentration of artisan and mechanic shops, came almost to a shutdown. Gashing out of patrol on the streets posed a serious threat to public safety and also took toll on commercial activities amid heavy vehicular traffic. Mm. You know, this accident occurred yesterday night. So it seems that the vehicles are not going and people are not coming here because of the accident that occurred. And let me tell you, there's a strong man who on that place, Takoma crew, that causing the same accident. This is two times occurred. The same accident. The same place. The same place and the same uh, time. So the government will do something about that. This accident, she said, has affected today's activities. Food vendors have been asked not to light any flame because the leaked patrol has traveled quite a distance. A similar incident occurred two weeks ago. The pothole over there is causing such accidents. City authorities should fix that stretch of the road. Here is Swami Divisional Commander of Police, DSP Kinsley Kaudia. A tanker, petrol tanker, uh, which fell on each side and the fuel started spilling. So we quickly have to protect the area so that people will not come around and it will spark fire. So we were here since dawn for this. Meanwhile, some of the men are also on the route, we have diverted the route to be one way. So all the vehicles coming from Kumasi direction to Offensu direction, they are taking one way. We have blocked the other lane. And that is where the accident occurred. So, so far, we are still on it. We are here to transfer the fuel to another tanker so that we'll be able to lift the accident tanker to the station for necessary action. Nadmo Regional Coordinator, 
Kwabna Senchiri sympathizes with affected residents. We don't know what has happened this early dawn, right? And uh, most of them couldn't have the opportunity to sell and to do their trade, you see. But that is where they have their income. They own their dairy bread from. But uh, if such something happened and they couldn't, I mean, go on their normal business, it means we have to sympathize with them. Okay. Yeah, but it's more better than to go with empty stomach rather than to lose your properties and life. Regional Deputy Commander of Fire Service, uh, ACFO Amwa Guardian Napoleon, explains the magnitude of the situation. Uh, we have already told them that they should not be using fire. They should not let any fire around because once it is petrol, the scent going out can't even bring the fire. So for now, uh, they should stop everything in connection with fire for about two or three days uh, so that the scent will go down before they can maybe do anything of that. Reporting for Joy News, Nana Asensu Mensa. Now, the National Petroleum Authority's plan to recall LPG cylinders in circulation has been met with mixed reactions. Joy Business's Karen Dodo has been engaging some consumers of LPG and has filed this report. The planned LPG recall forms part of the recirculation model, which is expected to begin later this year. Chief Executive of the NPA, Hassan Tampuli, made this known at a colloquium held yesterday to address matters arising in the petroleum sector. He explained that the recall of the cylinders will happen in the latter stages and it's part of implementing the recirculation model. Although the collection of cylinders will not happen soon, consumers have met this announcement with mixed reaction. Christian Ampofo is a taxi driver who uses LPG as the fuel for his car. He is in doubt as to how this directive will apply to him. Is that possible? So if we remove the, this cylinder for the car, go to the station, they take back because it's the viscous. Because that's if you have taken them and dropping or like a different car dropping, go there, come back, put it for my car, turn it again, go give me the problem. That this one is on the fiscal, it will make, make this cost for me. That it will make the straw that public straw will come to the car. Others raise similar concerns. Uh, when they recall it, uh, I don't know. I don't know how, how far with the public education. Because they need to educate, really educate the public how to use it, the pros, the cons, the good side and the bad side of, of the whole issue. But moreover, I'm told when you come here, the gas is already in the cylinder, it has been filled, and we don't know. Uh, it also creates an avenue, I don't know, people there's going to be controversy because we don't know whether if you come and there's a filled cylinder and they tell you it's a hundred cities worth, how can you determine it? So I have questions for the question is when they collect our old one, are they going to pay for our old cylinders? The new one they are, they are bringing, are we going to pay for them or they are going to distribute it free? That's, if they are, they are able to answer that question, then we know how, how, how to go about it. Because maybe somebody will use this opportunity to create an industry. The National Petroleum Authority has disclosed that it will recall all LPG gas cylinders as part of the recirculation model to take effect this year. Mm -hmm. Now consumers have met this directive or this instruction with mixed reactions and with some calling for more education on the recirculation model. Reporting for Joy Business, Karen Dodu. Turning to aviation now, and Namibia's national carrier, Air Namibia, has announced it is returning its services to Ghana in March this year. Air Namibia commenced operations in Ghana in 2009, but subsequently stopped because of low passenger numbers. Now, speaking to Joy Business after paying a Kessie call to the Minister of Aviation, the Namibian High Commissioner to Ghana, Charles Joseph, said this time the airline has put in place sustainable measures to facilitate its services. Air Namibia Ghana commenced direct flights from Accra to Johannesburg, South Africa and Windhoek, Namibia in 2009. However, in 2014, the airline had to pull out its services from the country due to low passenger numbers. But in a courtesy call to the Minister of Aviation, the Namibian High Commissioner to Ghana, Charles B. Jusop, said the airline is making a reappearance this March. Uh, Air Namibia will come, be coming on the 24th of March, as, as things stand now. Uh, that is within the next two months. 
We are looking forward to a great entry, and we are looking forward to a situation where the figures will tell their story that Ghanaians will be coming in big numbers to Namibia, and Namibians will be traveling to, to Ghana and the region in big numbers. That and Namibia will be here to stay, uh, uh, that as time goes, we can say that the, the intra-African trade is taking place, that the skies are open, that our airlines can move freely and our people can move freely between the borders of our countries. And ultimately that uh, there shouldn't be any obstacles in, 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 in that endeavor of our people to wanting to do trade and business. One factor was that was given to us was the lack of a mission on the ground and visas uh, being difficult to come by. People had to go to, uh, to Nigeria for their visas or had to send their documents. I came here uh, January 2015 to set up a resident mission. So we have now dealt with the, the visa issues. It is quite easy to get a Namibian visa, of course provided you just satisfy the very uh, simple requirements. Uh, so we have de dealt with that. On her part, the Minister for Aviation explained the re-entry of Air Namibia is timely for the sector's development. So it's all in pursuit of our vision of making Kutuka International Airport our biggest airport in Ghana, the hub for aviation in the ECOWAS region. And now we are being sought after like a good bride. And Air Namibia is coming back because the condition is favorable. And it's all because of the hard work put in by our president to sell Ghana. His motto, Ghana Beyond Aid, ties in, or this ties in very much so with that vision because he believes that African countries can develop on their own through this type of cooperation, commercially, economically, tourism-wise, and education-wise. So I believe we are all happy. This is very good news. As much as we want people or airlines to come from other places, we entreat African airlines to take advantage of our open skies and to come and do business with us. Besides Air Namibia, Qatar Airways has also indicated it will commence operations to Accra. Sheila Tamaklou for Joy Business. Now, if you thought cryptocurrencies would become less popular, especially following the Bank of Ghana's caution, then you might be thinking wrongly. Ghana now has its first indigenous, indigenous rather, cryptocurrency, Finch coin. Finch coin, Ghana Limited, the entity behind the currency, hopes to make more Ghanaians adopt this mode of transaction which has become a global phenomenon. But to what extent do people understand the concept and would it be readily used? Joy Business sampled the views of a section of the public. I have not read much about it to know what it's about. So I, I can't say I want to invest in it unless I have read more about it then. I understand what it is about before I can invest in it. We have seen so many times that these monetary system came up with all different kind of schemes and people have lost their money. So I'd be very, very cautious in actually dealing with it. Bitcoin is so new. So if I have to use it for business at all, I would like to wait a bit to see its success, first of all, because you also don't want to lose money. Since it's, it converts into so much uh, money accumulated into something small. I've heard about it by investing it in it now, because I want to have control of my uh, investments. I prefer to see what I'm doing and what I'm, uh, where it's going and where the returns is going to come from. The best point is actually like a very good investment for now. Um, you are able to get like more returns. And I wish um, way back in 2009 I had actually invested. I'm sure I've gotten like some more money now because um, it's like a thousand dollars for one coin. Why not? I actually would if the market is good. Why not? Prices of petroleum products are expected to go up by some 5% from this weekend. This is what Joy Business has picked up from some big players in the oil marketing business. But would these oil marketing companies have their way uh, by increasing prices at the pumps? The following business desk report highlights some of the issues. Some of the major oil marketing companies have told Joy Business the expected increase has been necessitated by the increasing prices of crude oil on the international market. 
This has impacted on the price of petroleum products imported into the country. Some of these firms have also told Joy Business the current arrangement of using part of the stabilization levy to hold prices at the pumps may not be enough to keep prices at the pump unchanged for that long. The projected increase has been compounded by the recent sustained depreciation that hit the city, which meant that oil marketing companies required more CDs to import the same volume of finished petroleum products. A litre of diesel or petrol is currently being sold at around 4 CDs, 49 pesos. So going up by 12 pesos would result in a litre being sold at 4 CDs, 61 pesos. This should mean that a gallon should be going for 20 CDs, 20 pesos, if this increase really happens. Well, time to bring you our interview of the day related to the story you just heard. Government has indicated that it would step in to cushion consumers against petroleum price hikes Insisting that the stabilization program which seeks to hold prices at the pumps till February is still in force. This is coming on the back of reports that uh, prices of petroleum products are expected to go up by some 5% uh, this weekend. Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam is Deputy Energy Minister. Interview of the day. So far, it's, 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 it's not working as we anticipated because the margin of uh, increase in, in, in prices, international prices of product, uh, appear to be more than what we projected, you know. But uh, uh, in spite of that, we have continued to use the stabilization uh, levy to somehow uh, manage the, the effect such increases will have on the, on the consumer. If we didn't have that, you will have uh, a more serious effect because the increase in domestic prices of our product would have been more than we have seen over the last uh, two three months. In some uh, cases because of the application of the levy we have seen zero increase in, in the prices of products. And also uh, as you monitor the market you will see that the increases we have had so far have been very marginal. One percent or two percent is as a result of the application of the stabilization levy. But as we keep saying, this is not going to be indefinite. It's, it's a temporary measure, and many people have said that. Why are you applying the stabilization levy to manage prices when you are operating a deregulated market? And I just want people to know that the market fails. In most free market economies, there are such interventions that government will fall on where the market fails. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you have a measure like a stabilization measure uh, resulting from the introduction of the stabilization levy for purposes like that, the, I don't see why government should not fall on that when prices are getting to levels that government thinks will be unaffordable. I've been yeah. engaging some of the OMCs and <clears throat> sorry, they are telling me that possibly we should expect about a 12 peso hike uh, when the next window opens, that's just this weekend. Has that come to your notice? Yeah, of course. I mean, as managers of the petroleum sector, we are constantly monitoring the market and the, what is happening and constantly reviewing uh, our measures, our strategies on how to address the effect that could have on, on consumers. So uh, from our point of view, uh, if we do not apply the stabilization levy, we are likely to see about 4 to 5% increase in prices. Mm. But, I mean, as we indicated earlier, we're going to apply this up to February, and therefore we will be applying that. Interview of the day. And that's it for our program tonight. Thanks for watching. There's more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. You get all the day's business stories, including videos, just in case you missed out on any of our bulletins. My name is Daryl Kyle. Thanks once again for watching. We'll see you same time tomorrow.